Welcome viewers, our topic today is on fluorescence microscopy. If you are new here, welcome, we are a group of retired professors sharing bite-sized videos in life sciences. Let's dive into the topic for today. Introduction. Proteins are made up of long chains of amino acids, which are the building blocks of proteins. There are 20 different types of amino acids that naturally occur in proteins. The specific types, numbers and order of amino acids that make up a protein determine its unique characteristics, including its molecular structure and physical chemical attributes. This diversity in the amino acid composition is the reason why proteins have different structures and functions. Protein Concentration Determination In research, Protein concentration quantitation is an integral part of any laboratory. The measurement of the amount of protein present is a crucial step in various laboratory processes such as extracting, purifying, and labeling proteins. This step is often required before further processing the protein samples for analysis using methods such as chromatography, electrophoresis, and immunochemistry. The method used for determining protein concentration may vary based on the desired level of precision and the quantity and quality of the protein available. Methods of Protein Concentration Quantification The most basic and straightforward method for determining protein concentration in a solution is to measure the absorbance at 280 nanometers using UV light. This method works because certain amino acids, such as tyrosine, tryptophan and phenylalanine, have strong UV light absorption. The absorbance of UV light by proteins and peptides is proportionate to their content of aromatic amino acids and their overall concentration. HPLC for amino acid analyses. Another method commonly used in amino acid analysis by HPLC is to label all primary amines, such as the N-terminus and side chain of lysine residues, with a colored or fluorescent dye such as ninhydrin or othalaldehyde, OPA. However, both the UV absorption method and HPL reagent approaches have limitations that make them impractical for use with typical protein samples in proteomics workflows. The UV absorption method is not suitable for protein mixtures as different proteins have varying aromatic amino acid content, which affects their absorption characteristics. Additionally, any non-protein content that absorbs UV light will interfere with measurements. Challenges in protein analyses Thus far, we can see that the analyses of proteins can appear quite complicated, right? To overcome these disadvantages, several colorimetric and fluorescent, reagent-based protein assay techniques have been developed that are used by nearly every laboratory involved in protein research. Approach towards protein concentration determination when measuring protein concentration, a sample of the protein is mixed with a reagent that causes a color change or increased fluorescence in proportion to the amount of protein present. The protein concentration is determined by comparing the intensity of the color change or fluorescence to a standard curve, which is created using known concentrations of a purified reference protein. The standard curve is used as a reference to measure the protein concentration of unknown samples. Types of protein assay techniques. First, let us explain the four common types of protein assay techniques. They are UV absorption, biuret methods, colorimetric dye based methods and fluorescent dye methods. UV absorption. Starting with UV absorption, it has the benefits of being simple and doesn't require any assay reagents. However, with UV absorption, it is highly error-prone with protein mixtures or complex samples, e.g. cell lysates. This leaves us with the three other methods. Biuret assay. Up next, we have the biuret approach which has its principles with protein copper chelation and the analyses is based on the secondary detection of reduced copper. Benefit include good compatibility with most surfactants which are detergents except for incompatibility with substances that reduce copper and with common reducing agents such as DTT. Thus if DTT is applied in upstream protein preparation, then we will not be able to use the biuret method. Colorimetric assay. The next approach which is colorimetric dye-based method has the principle based on protein dye binding in direct detection of the color change. 
It has incompatibility with surfactants or detergents and exhibits high protein protein variation when compared to copper based assays. The good aspects about the colorimetric dye based method is that it is fast and easy to perform, including at room temperature, and its excellent compatibility with most salts, solvents, buffers, thiols, reducing substances, and metal chelating agents. The fluorescent dye methods is based on protein dye binding and direct detection of increase in fluorescence associated with the bound dye and this approach requires specialized equipment such as a fluorescent plate reader or equivalent. This approach is considered the best of the four methods that we have discussed. Key considerations Having excellent sensitivity, requiring less protein sample for quantitation makes it part of a common analytic workflow. Moreover, timing is not a critical factor for researchers, so the assays can be adapted for automated handling in high-throughput applications as it is capturing the endpoint fluorescence output. Closing Perspectives The goal is to choose a method that minimizes the need for sample preparation or modification to account for substances that affect the assay. Each method has unique benefits and drawbacks. Since no single reagent can be considered the perfect or superior protein assay method for all situations, most scientists have multiple options for protein assays in their labs. In our future videos, we will be discussing three major protein analysis techniques, protein separation, western blotting and protein identification.